the 90s, a game-changing era in Hollywood that saw the release of numerous blockbusters such as The Shawshank Redemption, Terminator 2, and the Titanic. But no one would ever have imagined that the real game-changer would have been seeing a living, breathing dinosaur on the big screen. Terrifying enough to not only scare children, but an audience of all ages. Think it'll scare the kids? This will give the parents nightmares. What seemed to be an impossible task at the time was successfully brought to life by Universal Studios and the genie's direction of Steven Spielberg with a film adaptation based on a novel by Michael Crichton, an adventure 65 million years in the making that went by the name of Jurassic Park. That first park was legit. Legit indeed. You realize a movie marks history when it's never been surpassed by any other dinosaur flick in 30 years, and essentially, not even by its own sequels. The Lost World and the sequels that came after it always brought forth a unique experience in their own way, but the essence of the first Jurassic Park is unlike any other, brilliantly introducing the Jurassic franchise that we all came to know and love. Jurassic Park's rich storyline sees wealthy engine CEO John Hammond creating a theme park of cloned dinosaurs on an island he owned off the coast of Costa Rica. A touristic attraction holding a variety of genetically engineered dinosaurs brought to life following DNA extraction from prehistoric mosquitoes found in fossilized amber. And how'd they get it to stay there? Just stick there? Well, because, he, because uh, when sap came off a tree and trapped the mosquito, about 50 million years later, the sap got hard, actually gets hard before 50 million years, and it entombs the mosquitoes. For the endorsing of his park, Hammond sought paleontologist Alan Grant and paleobotanist Ellie Sattler, who were both joined by Ian Malcolm, who was invited to the park as a consultant. John Hammond's dream was soon to be realized until one of his employees was bribed by InGen's rivals, Biosyn, to steal numerous dinosaur embryos. Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. That was Hammond's mistake. This led to the shutting down of the park systems, the escape of its dangerous dinosaurs, and ultimately, the failure of InGen's Jurassic Park. Your genetic power is the most awesome force the planet's ever seen, but you wield it like a, a kid that's found his dad's gun. And we can't talk about Jurassic Park without mentioning what could be the film's most profound moment, which would be the iconic lunch scene, in which we see the group debating the ethics of dinosaur cloning and the conceptualization of the park itself. And while as a kid you may have thought this scene was just a boring discussion, as an adult, you'd then realize that this part was nothing less than fascinating and extremely important. Easily one of the most crucial moments in the entire franchise and one of the greatest scenes in film history. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could they didn't stop to think if they should. Right. So they're coming up, we're just coming around. The group then embark on a tour that is soon cut short due to a tropical storm, one that would set a much darker tone to the rest of the movie, introducing a unique sense of horror as dinosaurs roam freely among our protagonists, all during a violent storm. In fact, the most powerful hurricane to ever strike Hawaii, Hurricane Iniki, passed over the Hawaiian island of Kauai during the movie's filming, costing the team a day of shooting and destroying their sets. However, the hurricane ended up contributing to the movie's dark atmosphere as director Steven Spielberg captured actual footage during the hurricane, becoming a vital character in the movie itself. 1993 marked a special year for director Steven Spielberg, releasing what was considered one of the greatest films of all time, Schindler's List, earning him an Academy Award for Best Director, as well as Jurassic Park becoming the highest grossing film ever at the time surpassing $1 billion in worldwide box office while winning three Academy Awards. Spielberg's passion for the Jurassic franchise went beyond filming, so much that he even helped design a Jurassic Park theme attraction at Universal Orlando in Florida. The movie's success saw Steven Spielberg returning to film its sequel in 1996, The Lost World. And while it also became the highest grossing film of 1997, the original was still deemed superior by the majority of the audience. After The Lost World,
Spielberg would remain attached to the franchise as an executive producer throughout the remaining sequels, including the latest entry, Jurassic World Dominion, which was actually shot in my country, Malta. A large part of what made Jurassic Park so unique was the incredible realism behind the dinosaurs that was especially achieved by state-of-the-art animatronics led by the incredible talent of the late Stan Winston, who Spielberg particularly selected after seeing his work on the Queen Alien in 1986's Aliens. Following the animatronic designs, CGI models for these dinosaurs would then be based on Winston's models. Herds of dinosaurs were also created through computer animation, duplicating and altering such models for the illusion of multiple dinosaurs. Jurassic Park received critical acclaim for its innovation in animatronics and CGI technology, and generated interest in dinosaurs among audiences of all ages, introducing everyone to one of the most popular franchises in the history of cinema, surpassing a total of 6 billion in worldwide box office, thus becoming one of the highest grossing film series of all time. I've honestly lost count of how many times I've watched Jurassic Park after watching it at the cinema back then, and personally, it's one of those movies that I simply can't change the channel whenever I come across it on TV. It feels surreal to know it's been 30 years since the movie that ignited my passion towards cinema, and it's so great seeing the original cast and millions of fans celebrating this grand milestone in their own way. Me, on the other hand, I ordered this 30th anniversary edition Blu-ray, which I can't wait to get my hands on. So until it arrives, I'll be sure to give this brilliant movie another watch. What about you guys? How are you celebrating 30 years of Jurassic Park? And what are some of your best memories from watching this movie? Let us know in the comment section down below. We hope you enjoyed this video, and for all things cinema and gaming, hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll be sure to return the favor with content you won't find anywhere else. Thank you all for watching. Until we meet again, life finds a way. Python and Selkin, out.